OK, so let's think about the question that we ended last class with of what are things that change people's willingness to buy things? Um, and these are basically all changes in people's situations. OK, um, so let's see what you guys came up with. Um, Krish, what's something that changes people's willingness to buy something? OK, we lost Krish. That is very sad. OK, um, Abiram, what do you think? Um, maybe um, the amount they already have. Explain. Like, if they already had an item, then they probably would see if they would need that item again and if it would be useful for them. Um. OK, OK, Um. good. So we're going to have diminishing marginal utility like always. Um, but the only way people can get more of something is by buying it, right? So yeah. you can't change the amount they already have without having changed how much they bought of it in the past, right? So we're going to say no on that, but good thought. Um, OK, uh, Shlok, what do you think? Like maybe if they see an advertisement or a sale drop, they might want to buy it more. Ooh, good, good, yeah, definitely. All right, great. So we call these the demand shifters. OK, demand shifters. So that's what you're going to title your page, demand shifters. Okay. And we're going to write them on the board. Okay. All right, so first one, first category. OK, so all of these demand shifters, these are things that change uh, I'm sorry, I guess we should define this. Demand shifters, you ready? OK, demand shifters. OK, these are things that change people's willingness to buy. Things that change people's willingness to buy, even if the price stayed the same. Things that change people's willingness to buy, even if the price stayed the same. Things that change people's willingness to buy, even if the price stayed the same. Nicole? Would the flavor be one of them for a demand shifter? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, friend. Hang on. I didn't call on you to give a demand shifter yet. We're still talking about what they are. OK, so demand shifters um, move the entire demand curve, right? So we saw yesterday how changing the price changed your willingness to buy different amounts of ice cream bars. But it was only because the price changed that you wanted to buy different amounts of ice cream bars, right? Because everything else stayed the same, okay? So a demand shift, okay, which is what happens when you have a demand shifter, looks like this, okay? So we have price and quantity, like always, okay? We have the name of the good at the top. I don't know, it could be ice cream or whatever, okay? So the name of the good is the title, price and quantity on the axes. And then you have one demand curve. OK, so downward sloping with a D. OK, and then if people wanted to buy more ice cream for some reason, you guys can come up with the reasons. Then the demand curve shifts out. OK, so we have D1 and D2. So D1 arrow to D2. OK, so this is saying that even if the price were to stay the same, Instead of buying this quantity of ice cream, people would want to buy this quantity of ice cream, right? So people are just more excited about buying ice cream than they were before. OK, so we call this demand shifting out. OK, so this is a demand shift out. OK, 
So this is demand shift out or to the right. Okay, this is people are more excited about buying ice cream than they were before. Okay, so you guys can think about reasons for that. And then a demand shift in is when people are less excited about buying the good than they were before. So we again have price, quantity, we title it ice cream or whatever the name of the good is. Okay, we have a demand curve downward sloping with a D. Okay. But now something happened that makes people less interested in buying ice cream than they were before. Okay, so now we're going to do an arrow pointing in. Okay, an arrow pointing to the left and the new demand curve being inside. Okay, so again, D1 now is the outside curve. D2 is the inside curve and the arrow points from D1 to D2 always. <laughs> arrow always points from no, D1 to D2. So this is called a shift in. So this is a decrease in demand. Okay, a decrease in demand. People are less interested in buying this good than they were before. So shift in or a decrease in demand. People do not want as much ice cream as they did before. Okay, um, right. So so we can do this for any good. Um, good. And so you guys can think about what those might be. So all of these, we're going to have five of them. Um, they're going to start with delta, which means change in. Okay, so in physics, you've probably seen the symbol delta it means change in. Okay, um, so these shifts can only happen if something changes, right? The the market for ice cream will only change if something changes that changes how much people want to buy ice cream. Okay, and so that's what we're going to list here, right? Things that sh that change that change people's willingness to buy this. Okay, important. Um, when we say ice cream, we mean uh, like all ice cream. Okay. And we have an, our, our, an idea in our mind of like what that is, okay? If the good changes, then it's not the same thing as before, okay? So uh, a bunch of, of you thought yesterday that changing the quality of the good would change how much people want to buy it, and that's true, but then it's not the same product, okay? So quality changes cannot be part of the demand shifts because then it's not the same product it was before. It's a different thing, okay? So we would title that like, new ice cream all right improved ice cream right and it would be a different product and have a different demand curve okay um so if the product changes it's a different thing and we make a different graph for it okay so yeah we want to think about mostly the changes in people's circumstances okay so good thought anthony so we have um advertising okay so leave space for the the shifter OK, because you guys are probably going to come up with a couple other ones that fit in this category. But underneath this category, we'll have advertising. Right, so an effective advertising campaign will make people more excited about the product, which will increase how much they buy. Uh, or an ineffective or controversial advertising campaign could make people less interested in buying the product or decrease demand. OK, um, cool. Uh, OK, so um, then Nicole, do you want to explain the one you're thinking of? Real, my thing mine's wrong now that you explained it kind of I'm pretty sure it's wrong okay got it um okay do you want to give a different one or uh do you want to explain what you thought and why it was wrong um I don't really have a different one but I know mine's wrong because it changes a product okay cool all right thanks Nicole okay let's hear from Shyby something that could change people's willingness to buy the product Um, maybe their loss of interest, maybe like before they must have really wanted it, but like later on they feel like that I don't really need it. Okay, what, what could change to make them change the way they feel about that? Like for example, if they want like a new ice cream flavor, maybe there's like a new kind that came out, and then like they really want to try it, but then later on they find out that it's really not that interesting. It's not as cool as it sounds. Okay, cool. All right, great. So yeah, that would also fit under the same one as advertising. Um, what we call tastes and preferences. Tastes and preferences. Good, yeah, so like popularity of the product. Right, a change in popularity. Okay. Good, okay, so tastes and preferences. So this is going to be kind of our catch-all category for all sorts of like um, things about people's feelings that affect how much of this good they want to buy. Um, Aria. I would think that actually even a lo 
the location that the ice cream would be sold is also important because what if you're selling ice cream and it's super far away you really want to try the ice cream but since it's so far away your demand would your demand would decrease right okay so you're not wrong but we're looking at the market for all ice cream right and so even if one ice cream store is far away from you, it's close to other people, right? So when you look at the whole market for ice cream, right? Everybody who buys ice cream in whatever area we're thinking about. Oh, so everybody's like on average near a place where they could get ice cream. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's hear from um, Faiza. What could change people's willingness to buy something? So I put the, if the like personal satisfaction or I guess the utility, if that fluctuated, like if a person wanted it and then didn't want it. But... Why would they change their perceived utility of it? Maybe like there was some famous person went there and then put like a bad review and then that influenced everybody else to not get that ice cream. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that we put that in taste and preferences. Okay, cool. Thanks, Faisa. All right. Um, Mahita, what could change people's willingness to buy something? Um, I'm not really sure, but I thought it could maybe do with like the population size in a certain area because like if there's not as many people like there's not as much consumption of like ice cream excellent very good change in population excellent yeah good because more people means more people eat ice cream right and less people means less people eat ice cream excellent very good um change in population yep um great so yeah it's, it's basically the case that more people means more demand for all goods and less people means less demand for all goods. But absolutely, yeah, very good. Um, and then another one related to this is demographics. Demographics, okay. So you'll use whichever of these makes the most sense for the situation. Um, so demographics just means a change in the composition of the population, right? So as you guys probably know, the baby boom generation that was born after World War II in the United States is an unusually large generation, right? So as they went through their life, they comprised a larger than normal share of the, the population for that demographic, right? So when they were teenagers, there was an unusually large proportion of the population that was a teenager, right? So there was increased demand for teenager goods, right? Uh, and then when they were young adults, there was um, increased demand for young adult goods, right? And then now that they're retirement age and senior citizens, there's an increased demand for things that senior citizens buy, right? Like nursing home services and medical services. Um, so that uh, t change in demographics is telling us, or is when we see like, oh, well, in the population composition changed in some way, right? It could also be because of, um, you know, changes in immigration patterns, right? Like maybe we see an increase in immigration from a particular place. And so then we'd see more demand for goods that people from that place like to buy, right? Um, so any change in the composition of the population that changes how much of certain things would be demanded is a change in demographics shift. Okay, so that's the composition of the population. Okay. Oh, cool. All right, Chris, you want to explain how a change in price changes demand? Um, hey, Krish, what's the law of demand? Good. OK, so when the price of the good rises, does demand decrease? 
Also, you're missing Ceteris Paribus, so don't forget that in your law of demand. Okay, wait, so you're saying quantity demanded and the whole demand curve are exactly the same thing? That when you guys saw that the price of ice cream changed, you we drew an entirely new demand curve to show that you want to buy different amounts of ice cream even though the price is the same? Yeah, okay. So, friends, this is extremely, 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 extremely important. Demand shifts, right, moving the entire demand curve only happen when you have a shifter, okay? And price is not a shifter, right? Because remember what I told you and what you should have written down was that when demand increases, that means people want to buy more even if the price stayed the same, right? They just want it more than before, okay? So price change cannot change the demand curve, okay? Because if we go to a different price, we just go to a different point on the demand curve like we did with the, the ice cream bars yesterday. Okay, that as the price went up, you guys bought less of it. You just went to a smaller point, a smaller point of quantity on the demand curve. But it, it didn't change your willingness to buy ice cream, right? It didn't shift the line to a, a different level at the same price. It just meant, oh, okay, it's cheaper. You guys wanted to buy more. It was more expensive. You guys wanted to buy less. We we're just moving along the same demand curve. Okay, but what we're doing now is we're saying these are things that change how much people want to buy the good that isn't a price change. Okay, and of course, isn't a change in the good itself either. Okay, this is just changes in how people feel about buying that good that changes uh, how much they're going to buy even if the price were to stay the same. Uh, Kushi. I I thought that maybe it would be how rare the product is, because if for some reason the product becomes harder to acquire, even though it's the same product, people would want to buy it more. Um, would would they want to buy it more? Would that affect their perception of how useful it is to them? Yeah. Really? Okay, let's take a look. Let's draw it. Okay, so price, quantity. Okay, we're going to title the, the name of the good. I'm just going to write good, right? Just the generic good A. Okay, so this is good A. Price, quantity. Okay, so, whoops, there we go. So, if it becomes harder to get, that's a supply shift. Okay, right, it's harder to make it. So we're going to draw this. S1 to S2, supply shifts in, right? This is showing it's harder to make this good than before, okay? And so the price of the good goes up, right? Which makes sense, right? If it's harder to make it, the price is going to go up, okay? And then we know from the law of demand what happens to the quantity demanded. Anybody can type it in the chat. What happens to the quantity demanded when the price goes up? The quantity demanded when the price goes up. Good, everybody. Yes. And it, the quantity demanded goes down, right? See, the demand curve is exactly the same. The demand curve does not change at all whatsoever. Okay. But the quantity demanded goes down, right? People are going to buy less of this good because it's more expensive. Okay. Now there is, oh, okay. So, so, um, the confusion between demand, like when you should shift the whole curve and when it's just a price change and you should just move to a different point on the same demand curve, um, is a question that is on the comp and pre-comp every single year. And I'll tell you friends, write the comp and the pre-comp because I'm the sad half of students miss it because they're just not paying attention. Okay. You guys are not going to miss it you're not gonna not pay attention. Okay, you're gonna be watching, right? You're gonna say, is this a demand shifter or is it just a price change, okay? And so if it's just a price change, you just move to a different point on that same demand curve. If it's a demand shifter, then you shift to a new demand curve, okay? But you guys are not gonna fall for that because you're gonna pay attention, you're gonna be awesome, all right? Um, okay, so, um, but to, uh, to Kushi's thought, um, if people are, expecting the price of the thing to go up in the future, but the price hasn't gone up yet. 
Um, any thoughts about how they might respond to that? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have a thought about that. The price hasn't gone up yet, so there hasn't been a change in quantity demanded. But people think the price is probably going to go up in the future. What are they going to do differently today? What are they going to do differently today? Cash in. Um, maybe they might buy more of the product if they know it's going to be a higher price like the next At week or something. Good. OK, good. So remember, they can never know that, but they might suspect it, right? They might have reasons to think, oh, you know what? I bet that thing's going to get more expensive in the future. And absolutely, that'll make them want to buy more now, right? They're going to want to buy it before the price goes up. OK, so that graph was an increase in, oh, sorry, a decrease in supply. OK, decrease in supply. So uh, you could maybe like put a box around it so you know it's not demand because that was a change in quantity demanded. That was not a demand shift. These are our demand shifts. OK, um, OK, good. So change in expected future price. 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 Um, yep, so if people think the price is going to go up or down in the future, that's going to change how much they buy today, right? So if they think. So if they think price. Price will rise. OK, then they're going to buy more today, right? Because today the price is lower than they think it will be in the future and they always want to buy it at the lower price, right? So they're going to buy more today. So demand increases now. Demand increases now. OK, so you get a shift out like that. If people want to buy it now, before the price goes up, but we'll notice that them demanding it more will push, probably push the price up if the supply curve doesn't move. Okay, um, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, Isha. If, if people that are like buying it get reason, like if everyone starts making less, then they'll buy it less. Excellent. Very, very good, Isha. OK, good. Um, so you guys know all of these things work in both directions. So if the prices, if they think prices rise, they're going to demand more now. If they think prices are going to fall, they're going to buy less now because they think the price is going to be lower in the future. OK, so just think about like when the price is going to be lower and that's when people are going to buy it. OK, so if they think the price is going to go down. They're not going to buy it today, right? They're going to wait to buy it when it, it the price goes down. So for today, the demand shifts down. OK, excellent, Isha. OK, so. If people have less money, right, and, and you're absolutely right to describe it as like enough people to make a noticeable difference in this market, then absolutely that's going to change how much of basically everything they can buy, right? If they have less money, then they're going to buy less of most things. Good. So we call this change in income. Change in income, OK? Um, so some examples of this is uh, over time, um, like over the past 200 years, the incomes of Americans have risen like 10 times um, as we've gotten more capital to be more productive. Um, workers have gotten better training and skills um, and entrepreneurs have come up with more creative ways to solve people's problems uh, and create a lot of value. OK, so incomes have risen dramatically, which is awesome, OK, um, because that means People are more able to buy basically everything, right? Um, so demand for houses and cars and food and electronics and books and everything people buy pretty much has increased because people have more money, right? OK, um, and then we also have particular changes. So like um, that's a, a long run trend over 200 years. But, uh, you know, this year, right, uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs, right? And so their income went down significantly. Um, and so now they're less able to buy things, right? They're going to be really careful about spending their money because they're living off savings or they're, you know, borrowing money from a friend or something, right? So they're going to be really careful with how they spend, but that means that demand for goods that they would have spent the money on is going down because people are not spending as much money as before, okay? So when the economy crashes, people are going to spend less. Um, but if you know as the economy is growing over time and people are getting more prosperous then they can buy more um okay 
So change in income. So if incomes rise, if incomes rise, Okay, we're gonna have two kinds of goods here. Uh, okay, so there are two key terms. So if incomes rise, demand, demand for normal goods, normal goods increases. Okay, and this is a key term, so we're gonna underline it. Demand for normal goods increases. Okay, if incomes rise, demand for normal goods increases. Okay, so normal goods, you ready? You gonna write the definition? of normal goods? Okay, normal goods, okay. Oh, actually, sorry, we don't need to write the definition because the definition of a normal good is just that as incomes rise, people demand more of this good, okay? So this relationship to income is the only thing that defines a normal good, right? If incomes rise and people buy more of something, then we say, oh, that must be a normal good, right? Or if incomes fall and people buy less of something, then we know it's a normal good, okay? So normal goods go up when uh, demand goes up when incomes rise and normal goods demand goes down when incomes fall. That's all that normal goods are. They just have that connection to income. OK, um, but then we also have what we call inferior goods, which are really unfortunately named. Um, but if incomes rise. Incomes rise. People buy less. People buy less. inferior goods oh sorry and we could say demand decreases sorry to keep it parallel if incomes rise demand sorry we want to keep it parallel demand for normal goods i'm sorry demand for inferior goods okay if incomes rise demand for inferior goods demand for inferior goods falls okay all right and inferior goods is a key term we're going to underline it you're going to add it to your stack of words that you memorize Okay, but inferior goods just again just means this connection to income. Okay, so an inferior good is just a good that people buy less of when their incomes rise and a good that people buy more of when their incomes fall. Right, so if incomes fall, people buy more inferior goods. Okay, um, and it's unfortunately named because inferior goods are not any worse than normal goods, but they are usually cheaper. Okay, um, sometimes inferior goods are exactly the same as normal goods. So, like um, some store brands of of like you know food or things are made by the same company that makes the fancy name brand okay and so the the store brand and then the fancy name brand are exactly the same made by the exact same company sometimes right but when people's incomes rise they buy more of the fancy branded good and less of the store brand good right and then when incomes fall they buy more of the store brand good and less of the fancy brand good okay even though they might be exactly the same okay so um, what would be some examples of normal goods? OK, so you're going to write down these examples so you can remember what normal goods are. So what would be some examples of normal goods? Um, OK, go ahead and raise your hand. Don't type it in the chat. Go ahead and raise your hand. If you have uh, ideas about what might be a normal good. Um, Cassini. Um. I don't really know. OK, what's something that people and they have money? Um, like maybe a jewelry or car. Great. Excellent. Jewelry and cars. Those are both great normal goods. Jewelry and cars. Excellent. Great. Um, Shavatsa. Clothes. Um, OK, cool. That's good. Okay. Um, Maddie? Maybe a house or a car. Okay. Good. Yeah, a house, definitely. Good. Okay, we already have car up there. Okay, good job, guys. Um, uh, somebody who hasn't said something yet? Uh, Rhea? It's another normal good. People buy more of when their incomes rise. Maybe like fast food. OK, good. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, definitely all food eaten out of the house uh, would be a normal good. Fast food. Um, yeah, so fast food is less expensive than other kinds of food eaten out. But 
fast food is still more expensive than cooking at home. Okay. Um, so yeah, as people's incomes rise, they can eat outside of their house more, right? Whether it's at a restaurant or fast food, um, or you mean like a sit down restaurant or something. Okay, good. So yeah, eating food out of the house is indeed, um, something people do more of when their incomes rise. Okay. So now let's look at inferior goods. So what would be some examples of goods that people buy less of when their incomes rise, or it's probably easier to think of. They buy more of when their incomes fall, right? So, you know, if someone loses their job, right, what are some things that they would be more interested in buying than before? Or if, you know, for like a, a college student who doesn't have an income, right, what are some goods that, that seem very appealing to that person? Um, yeah, so so what, what are some inferior goods? AJ, thanks. Uh, a bus ticket. Good, yes. Excellent. Bus ticket. That's a great one. Right. So a car is more convenient. So if a person can afford a car, then they typically would, would choose that. Right. But yeah, if, if a person's income's falling or if, if incomes are falling, then people are going to be more interested in taking public transit because it is a lot cheaper than owning a car. OK, cool. Um, Ariel? Um, maybe they'll decide to rent a place out instead of like buy a house. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We might describe this as like an apartment, but yep, yeah, absolutely. They're going to rent instead of buying. Great. So we say apartment. Okay, good. Yep. Definitely an appealing option. Uh, Garaf. Um, they're, um, they're probably going to uh, cook their own food for achievement for cheaper, cheaper. Good. Yep, they're going to cook at home. It is definitely cheaper. Cook at home. Cool. Okay. Um, Daniel. Uh, maybe like the products in like uh, places like Goodwill and stuff. Like oh, good. Yep. Used goods are really popular. Yep, definitely. Used goods. Yep, like Goodwill. Yeah, so instead of, you know, getting new furniture, which would be a normal good, um, as incomes fall, people are going to be more interested in buying used furniture, right, or used clothes. Um, yeah, definitely. Very good. Okay. Um, all right. Ashna, last one. Thanks. Instant food? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like what? Like, like, warm, warmable pizza or, like, uh, macaroni and cheese that can go in the microwave. Nice. Yep. Good. Yep. So instant food tends to be very cheap. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely appealing, uh, right? Easy. Um, yeah. So like ramen noodles are classic inferior good, but yeah, box mac and cheese would be the, the same idea. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Good. Um, yeah, it is way cheaper than eating out and, you know, about the same amount of effort. Um, okay, cool. So I see, um, Ashna and Sarvata's hands are still up. Um, so if you guys have a question, you can leave your hand up. Um, okay, what's your question, Shrivatsa? Okay. Um, okay, so I'm not going to take any more examples of goods, but if you have a question, you can leave your hand up. Okay, do you have a question, Jacob? Um, does scarcity act like a demand sector or no? Ooh, what do you think? I mean, like, if when, once an object gets more, like, uh, scarce and the price goes up, but since price doesn't affect and demand sector doesn't affect the demand scarcity, then? Um, okay, yeah, so if it's more scarce because it's maybe harder to make or the supply of it went down, then that's what we drew before, where the price went up and the demand curve stayed the same, but people bought less of it because now it's more expensive. Um, so, uh, but if it's more scarce because people want it more, then the the supply curve stays the same and the price will go up, but people are going to buy more because they wanted to buy more and they are wanting to buy more caused the price to go up. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. All right, so we have taste and preferences. Okay, we have in change in income. Okay. We're missing a few more, but we have uh, actually the hardest ones to get. So we have the future price, which usually takes students a while to figure out. And then we also got the population demographics, which usually takes a while to figure out. So there's only one more, friends. So what's one more thing that could make change people's willingness to buy the good? Um, it has to do with a different good. 
has to do with a different good. All right, Daniel, go for it. Uh, the changes in price of um, like competing goods. Ooh, good. Tell me about that. Like uh, maybe Apple and Samsung. If like like Samsung's prices decrease, then like they want more of Samsung, not Apple. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah, change in price of related goods. Excellent. OK, good. So we're going to have two kinds of, of or two ways goods can be related. But absolutely, that's uh, that's a really good one. Um, the, the two goods are used for the same purpose. Um, we call those substitutes. OK, so substitutes. Substitutes. OK, so these are as a key term. You're going to memorize this too. So substitutes. OK, these are goods that serve the same purpose. OK, substitutes are goods that serve the same purpose. Okay, goods that serve the same purpose are substitutes. Goods that serve the same purpose. Goods that serve the same purpose. OK, so notice we did not define this as goods that are the same, OK? Because the only thing that's important for them to be substitutes is that they do the same job, OK? So when you're thinking about substitutes, think about, OK, what job are people expecting this thing to do? So what are some other things that could also do that job? Even those things, even though those things might look really different, right? So for example, a basketball court is a substitute for water. Okay. So in what way is a basketball court a substitute for water? All right, think about the purposes. Thanks, Divya. Um, maybe like um Basketball is like a sport and then um, swimming is also a sport. So then if you choose like swimming, like water over basketball, then you're choosing to do swimming over basketball. Good. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if the price of water increases, then more places might put in basketball courts for outdoor activity than a pool. Right. Um, good. So that's a substitute, right? Uh, that as the price of water goes up, people change how they use the water, right? Uh, and so for outdoor recreation, might you know build a basketball court instead of a pool. Okay, good, um, great. So we have so you guys are going to write down these pairs of examples. So basketball court and water is the first pair. Basketball court and water. Okay, um, and then other ideas of pairs of goods that serve the same purpose. So. Um, a few can be obvious, but also try to think outside the box. Try to come up with a pair that is kind of creative, right? Things that maybe aren't obviously exactly the same thing, but that do the same job. Thanks, Isha. Um, maybe like a store and a restaurant. Ooh, good. Tell me about it. Cause like. If there's like um, an empty space in like some kind of shopping complex or what or something, then one company could buy it as a store and another that might like have food inside or something and another company could buy it as a restaurant. Um, OK, so you're right that there are a lot of options for the suppliers, right? But in the eyes of the customer, do those two places well, serve two the same different place? restaurants? Like two different, okay. or like two different restaurants. Okay, definitely, right? So, yep, Chipotle is a substitute for uh, Panera Bread, right? Yep, any two restaurants are substitutes for each other. Yeah, okay, good. Um, okay, um, Arian, what would be another pair of substitutes? Uh, um, uh like if like i don't like um so you know how like nowadays uh people are uh, using like like ipads and all it's like computers okay uh, like if uh if like computers and all got more expensive and like people could like start using different types of uh like like people could start using like the tablets or ipads as computers which is like Excellent. better. 
Good. Excellent. Very good, Arian. Yep. Excellent uh, reference to the price change there. Good. Yeah. So then tablets and, com and computers would be substitutes. Yeah. Right. And good. They, they wouldn't be for everybody, but they don't have to be for everybody. Right. They just have to be for enough people that um, that it makes a noticeable difference when the price of computers changes that some people decide, you know, what, I'm not going to buy a computer. I'll just use a tablet instead. OK, cool. Um, Anthony. Like uh, learning like uh, Spanish and like learning English, they have the same purpose. Do they? Like you're just learning a language. What is the purpose of learning English? So you can speak to other people. Right. Um, OK, so that's an interesting, interesting example. Um, OK, so, so let's think about this. So if the price of learning English goes up. Will someone say, oh, wow, all right, you know, English tutors are more expensive than they used to be. OK, I'll just learn Spanish instead. That's fine. Oh, never mind. Right, good. So, so you can always ask yourself that question of like, OK, if the price of one of these goes up, are people going to feel like, oh, OK, well, that's not too big of a deal. I'll just buy this other thing instead. Um, right. And it's OK if they're not perfect substitutes. Um, and in fact, it's even more interesting if they're not like obviously super duper similar. But just if people think, oh, you know, well, that's kind of expensive. I'll just buy the other thing. Then then we would consider them substitutes. Um, Aria. Yeah, I have one on uh, video games versus, well, um, of any sports facilities like they both provide the same purpose. Like oh. video game consoles versus sport facilities. They both nice. provide the same purpose. Entertainment. Good. Yeah. Excellent, Aria. Very good. So if the price of, of consoles increase, they'll be like, oh, never mind. I'll just go to the basketball court and play some basketball instead. Good. And yeah, good. And again, not everybody has to feel that way. But if enough people feel that way that to make a noticeable difference in demand, then we would definitely count that. Very good. Yep. So game consoles and uh, sports facilities. Very good, Aria. Yep, they, they do serve that same purpose. Um, awesome, yeah, so um, good. So like any two foods would be substitutes to each other, potentially. Um, yeah, so the closer the substitutes are, the easier it is for people to switch between them. So like, you know, broccoli and green beans, right? Maybe people feel like, okay, those are really similar, right? And so if the price of broccoli decreases, then everybody buys broccoli instead of buying green beans, right? Um, but then in cases where the substitutes are further apart, the effect might not be quite as strong, but you'll still see like, oh, OK, well, people are switching from buying one to buying the other as the prices are changing. Um, OK, so if the price of a substitute. Increases, then demand for this good will increase. OK, um, so. Uh, right, so if the prices at Chipotle increase, then demand for um, Panera bread increases, right? People buy less of the thing that got more expensive. So for Panera, or sorry, for um, Chipotle that got more expensive, what's the demand shift? You know, and type it in the chat. For Chipotle that got more expensive, what's the demand shift? Or sorry, how, how does demand shift? For Chipotle got more expensive, how does demand shift? OK, everybody. OK, so we're looking at Chipotle. Price of Chipotle increased, right? Price of Chipotle increased. Price of Chipotle increased. We're looking at the demand for Chipotle. Price of Chipotle increased. Hey, good job, Jacob. Nice good job, Isha. Good job, team. OK, so that's it's OK, right? We're just learning. It's OK to fall for it. OK, but remember, we're not going to fall for it on tests and quizzes and on the comp and the pre comp. OK, we're going to be watching, right? We're going to know, oh, if the price of the good changes, that just moves us to a different point along that same demand curve. It doesn't change the the demand, the whole demand curve, right? We're not moving to a new demand curve, right? We're just moving to a different point on the same curve. So you need a shifter, right? One of our five shifters to change the demand curve. OK, so the price changing of the good itself just moves you to a different point on the same demand curve. OK, but that change in quantity demanded for Chipotle makes it more expensive. Fewer people buy it. That's a decrease in quantity demanded. OK, but then. For Panera, right, um, a substitute restaurant, people are more willing to buy from Panera because 
they are less interested in buying from Chipotle. Okay, so Panera feels an increase in demand, right? More people are wanting to buy Panera's goods, and it's not because they lowered the price, uh, but it's just because Chipotle is now more expensive. Okay, um, good. So that's that substitutes. Okay, and then it also goes the other way. So if Chipotle cuts its prices, then people are going to increase their buying of Chipotle, right? But again, it's not a demand shift. They're just going to increase their quantity demand. They're going to move to a, a higher quantity point on the line. Okay. Um, but they're going to buy less from Panera, right? So Panera is going to see a decrease in demand because of that. Okay. Then a second kind of good, that, the second way they can be related. Well, somebody want to describe the other way that goods can be related? So they could serve the same purpose, or there's another way they can be related. Uh, Kyle? So another way goods can be really new. Um, what do you mean by that? Okay, what was the first relationship we talked about? Ways goods can be related. Have you just been sleeping the last half an hour? Taste and preferences. All right, I would recommend not sleeping during class. Obviously, I can't, you know, smack you on the back of the head to wake you up, but would recommend not sleeping during class. Um, somebody want to help us out. What's another relationship between goods? Tanvi. It's another way goods can be related. Lose Tommy. Okay. Another way goods can be related. Mahita, thanks. Like maybe if they're bought together, like. If you were to buy um, like a, a donut, you'd maybe buy like coffee. Good. Yep. Excellent. Great. We call these compliments. Compliments. Yep. So compliments. A compliment is a nice thing to say. Okay. But a compliment are goods that go together. Okay. Goods that go together. Compliment goods that go together. Okay. Goods that go together. Uh, yep. Awesome. Thanks. We did goods that go together. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's a great one. Donut and coffee, right? Maybe people, when they buy a donut, typically buy coffee. So donuts and coffee. Excellent. So write down these examples as we're talking about them. So you can remember donuts and coffee. Okay, good. What will be some other compliment pairs, things that go together or that people typically, um, buy together or, you know, need more of if they want more of the other thing. Uh, Shivy, thanks. Um, could you the milk? Milk for what? Um, dip in the cookies. Oh, milk and cookies. Good. Yep, milk and cookies, right? So if the price of milk goes down, uh, right, maybe milk's on sale one week, right, and people buy more milk, they might walk past the Oreos and be like, oh, I have lots of milk. I could get some Oreos to go with my milk, right? And then the demand for Oreos increases because people were buying more milk. Okay, um, Zainab. Oh, good. Hot chocolate and candy canes. Yep, absolutely. Hot chocolate and candy canes, right? So if people are buying more hot chocolate, then maybe they'll buy more candy canes to go with their hot chocolate. Um, so the, the demand for that compliment increases. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, you guys are amazing. I gotta let you go. Um, but this is really good. Glad that you guys have lots of ideas. We've like Game Boys and batteries and like a million other things. But all right, you guys are amazing. I will see you in a little bit. Have a great morning. Bye.